Hey, this is Cybert signing into Red Alert Remastered again, or maybe for the first time in quite a while, depending on what order the videos come out. And in the south side as the allies, I believe playing Turkey, this is Death Metal. And as the yellow plane is the Soviets, I believe the USSR, this is Dynamic. I am Dynamic. Uh, got to see some Dynamic versus Bike Rush, Dynamic versus Raw Steel a little while ago. Dynamic was playing very well in those games, as you just maybe noticed in the minimap, he spawned up here, and instead of deploying right there, he decided to drive to the other side of this field and then deploy at a much more advantageous position here between these two fields and this third field down here. So he's in a great spot. The curious thing is that if you spawn on the south side of this map, you're kind of already in that spot. I guess you could move your MCV a little bit, but you have to drive so much less far. You have to, there's so much less distance you have to cover to get into that good spot between the three fields. So just kind of a, I guess, an asymmetrical thing about this map in terms of the spawning locations. Obviously, if you look at the map, it's asymmetrical in a way that uh, in most modern RTS games we would find unacceptable. But, uh, I don't know, this is just how the games were back then. I guess no one thought about symmetrical map balance, because if the spawning positions are close enough to being good, then surely the better player will win, and uh, I guess they didn't think about that, but, like, obviously this southern player has a bit of an advantage in that they can get out stuff more quickly. I did just cast a dynamic game, and it was a weird one. It'll either be coming out as a separate video, like as a rainy day game, or I might just tack it on to the end of this. So this might be kind of a long video, but it'll be two games, and again, this is a little bit strange the way this game is developing. Going to be going into three light tanks is Death Metal, and Dynamic getting out just a ton of infantry, and then potentially going to be breaking down the right side of the map. This single scouting rifleman that Death Metal is sending out is going to see the forces of Dynamic. And Dynamic's first little squad gets caught, and now he's going to try and break through on the very right edge of the map. Will he actually be able to do anything, or will Death Metal surround him and get the advantage of the light tanks? Maybe going to be coming in for the crush. There's the big move by Death Metal, and Dynamic is going to try and find some little pocket that can, he can hang out with his troops in to try and find some angle. Nope, it's going to be going for the splits, trying to avoid the crushes, and he is not going to get the kill on all of these tanks, but he might get the kill on these first two light tanks. The additional light tanks are going to be coming in. And what is the deal here, Dynamic? Is he just trying to buy time, or is there something else at stake here? This might purely be a time delay kind of tactic where if, you, if your opponent is particularly bad and not paying attention, then you just win with this because you get 20, 30 riflemen or whatever down into their base and you can gun down their MCV, you can take out their infrastructure very quickly. Second War Factory is up, by the way, for at least Death Metal, not for Dynamic just yet. And Dynamic already pushing out with this first couple of heavy tanks. He's not even going to pull those back home or just keep them in case there's an attack. He's ready to move out onto the map with them. Anyways, Death Metal does win that little battle, or at least he does deny any ability for Dynamic to do any damage with that initial attack. And yeah, these games definitely developing much more slowly than the last time I watched Red Alert. It is uh, less frenzied and less chaotic. It does feel like there is uh, some chance to make some real decisions. We'll see if any decisions are made other than build a whole bunch of heavy tanks or build a whole bunch of light slash medium tanks. In this case, Death Metal going for lots of light tanks. Many allied players do prefer that kind of a method. They're light tanks until they die. And other allied players much more prefer going for the medium tanks. So Dynamic is just going to bypass the entire light tank army of Death Metal. He's not going to try and fight it directly, but Death Metal is actually heading towards the wrong course, section sir. of the map. He thinks that Dynamic is in the original spawning location, which of course Dynamic is not. And Dynamic is going to be going for the crush on the infantry and what else beyond that? Currently not 
Not a lot. I thought he was going to jump on the MCV or something, but Dynamic is doing doing nothing here. <laughs> Death Metal is maybe a little bit confused as he's like, uh -huh, what's going on? And then he's going to cross the field. He'll see the Harvesters, and Death Metal now knows what happened. But a uh, little bit of a delay there. Uh, Death Metal is perfectly skirting yes, around the entire base. Technology. I cannot believe this. Death Metal completely missed the entire base of Dynamic in a way that's like uh, that's like an old-timey movie or like a vaudeville gag. But what in the world? How in the world did Death Metal circle the entire base of Dynamic and miss it by that small of a margin? Perhaps Dynamic is some kind of a genius <coughs> on a level that we just did not realize. Oh my gosh. He, draw those, he draws those light tanks into the absolute corner of the map, the farthest point away. And I think Death Metal thought maybe Dynamic sold everything off or something. Like, I can't even imagine what is going through Death Metal's head. The fact that he's not just jumping on this section of the map and trying to go for the kill. What a bizarre game this is turning into. I mean, they're still only building light tanks, heavy tanks, and riflemen, so that part of the meta hasn't changed at all for Red Alert in the last three or four months since I've even seen any games on Remastered, but, but like, the way this is played out is definitely different. I, I don't know what this is. It feels like Dynamic should have more economy. He went double MCV, so he got a second MCV, he got himself a repair depot, so he's got that much um, going for him. Two more heavy tanks heading down to the south. And yeah, Death Metal is moving out again, so we could end up because of the way this map is splitting, because of how Unit good ready. Dynamic's vision is versus how Vehicle bad reporting. Death Metal's vision is. Dynamic might just run in here now that the entire army has moved out, and then Death Metal will get like 80% of the way to Dynamic's base and then have to turn around and come home to defend it. I don't, I just don't even know what what this game is radar dome is up and now dynamic is it feels like he's getting to a better ba better place economically it feels like he's starting to get out a good number of harvesters that he would be looking to get out and okay the bases have been found and death metal is going for it so it's going to be a base race one way or the other dynamic has more mcvs but will that actually help him we will see. He does have a flame turret, but no Tesla coils here to stop these light tanks. Another heavy tank steps on out. Meanwhile, on the south side of the map, a Dynamic is not going for the buildings. He's kind of trading with the units, and now he's going to try and shut down the power plants to stop the production of death metal. The MCV might be next. No, it's actually the barracks that is next, and Dynamic is just slowly but surely losing all of his heavy tanks. And as it turns out, you don't have to outplay Dynamic directly. You just have to build a couple more tanks and then wait for him to execute a fairly poorly conceived attack. And that's how you win the game, I guess. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm so confused by these two games and the ways that they have played out. That will do it. So I'm going to guess Dynamic tapped out of that game, typed the old GG, and uh, headed for the hills. What a bizarre game, but Death Metal gets the win there. And what a bizarre game. I have nothing. I don't know what's going on with these games. I don't know what this is. This is like, it's, it's just strange. It doesn't play out like any of the remaster that I played or any of the remaster that I watched. But it's been a while, so maybe that's what it is. Anyways, that'll do it for this game, for this video, for something. Thank you. This is Cybert signing into Red Alert Remastered. That's right. We're going to do some more remastered. The map is a path beyond in the north as the Yellow Soviets. Give it up for the guy who's base crawling to the gems. This is Dynamic. And in the south as the Cyan Allies, this is Cyan Allies. All right, so loading up this replay, the yellow player's Anyone? name displayed as I am dynamic. And the Cyan player just said retrieving. So I guess there was some kind of a bug in the replay loading system. 
and their name just never showed up. And then their name also doesn't display in game, and I thought that they would. Curious refinery placement. So right out of the gate, okay, so actually they're both going for the same kind of refinery placement. Dynamic is just going to auto harvest these ore and the gems, I assume, over here. He's not actually totally base creeping backwards. He wants his first refinery out towards the uh, out towards the ore a little bit. And it looks like our cyan allied player, we should make up a name for him. We could call him like Retrieving because that's what it actually said. It would be funny if that was just his name was Retrieving. So when it switched from saying retrieving to his name, it would just display the same thing. Or we could call him Daddy Cool Jeans. Perhaps that is a good name for him. But uh, sort of similar philosophies with deploy deploying their first refineries. I thought because the barracks was far back like this that Dynamic was going to be going for a direct refinery on the gems into a sub pen. Okay. No naval response as of yet from our Cyan allies, Daddy Cool Jeans. So I'm not sure if uh, if Dynamic will gain a bit of an advantage by having a supply transport in the south. I am, uh, I'll be honest, I have not seen any Red Alert Remastered games or played any Red Alert Remastered games since, like, May or maybe even April. So it has been a while. And I am genuinely curious as to what Dynamic is doing and uh, what is about to happen. Nothing. Nothing is about to happen. That's apparently what this uh, what this is. No, okay, he's just, he's scouting? I don't, I don't know what Dynamic is doing. Dynamic did just a pretty basic spread of infantry. You probably saw that earlier. Scouting with just a couple of guys around each side, but then he's filling in the corners of the map yes, with ready. that transport. Meanwhile, Daddy Cool Jeans, a little bit later on the scout, a little bit slower on the scout overall, but he has sort of secured his borders, and I guess we'll see what he does after that. Double War Factory is up. Single Refinery. So not dropping a bunch of refineries. I guess uh, maybe I'm thinking of uh, Tib Dawn, where you need more refineries because of how slow harvesters dump off their Tiberium. But in this particular case, Dynamic getting harassed, and now I'm kind of wondering, because Dynamic has nothing, if uh, someone has stolen I Am Dynamic's account, and this is not the guy that we saw uh, beat... Bike Rush and Raw Steel in like those eight games that I casted a short while ago. Okay, so the transport goes down. The tank will go down to the heavy tank of Dynamic. And finally, the Rifleman does go down as well. So I'm not exactly sure what uh, what the deal is. This is a very low eco kind of opening for these two players. Two harvesters, and of course the harvester AI is properly harvesting from very far away from the refinery first. Always what you love to see. And... Yeah, because they went so low eco, they don't really have very much money at this point and because they don't have very much money they're not uh that harvester really needs to just uh, drop off its or oh boy daddy cool jeans his harvesters do not like him this is um this is oh he got one he <laughs> go oh okay now they're all in line daddy cool jeans gonna be able to fix his harvesters very nicely there mcv on the move for dynamic and this is a second mcv so this is not the first mcv is this a no rush map did did the meta change while i was gone and it's just a no rush kind of kind of setup now and where's this harvester going Oh, I love the Harvester AI. This is the this is the whole reason why people play this game. Okay, he is actually going for the gems. Is it actually worth it to drive up there and get the gems? Probably not, but maybe. Maybe it is, you know, when all of this ore is right here. 
Now up to five harvesters having to drive quite a ways to this refinery. Probably worth even rebuilding that refinery. Although there is a second refinery here now. Might even be worth selling off that refinery because it is having some serious pathing problems for our cyan allied player. I love this radar dome, advanced power plant, and a refinery in the top right for dynamic. Triple MCV over here. So he's going to build buildings really quickly if he ever gets enough cash to build them. But uh, he will indeed have a lot of buildings that he can construct very quickly indeed if, uh, if he chooses to. He's going to be able to drop like six war factories, maybe even just chain together and loop all the way around this lake and head all the way down here and just drop turrets in his opponent's base. Slow build up. Especially by comparison to those matches that we saw previously with uh, with Bike Rush and Raw Steel which just rather exploded. One little patch of gems still unharvested and this rifleman standing near other gems that are unharvested. Medium tanks and riflemen, a couple of light tanks built as well for Daddy Cool Jeans. We'll see uh, how they fare against the heavy tanks. It looks like he's got the numbers superiority, but uh, we'll see if that actually works out. Is he going to try and jump on some of these tanks? He might just be trying to bypass some of these tanks to jump on the infrastructure, but nope, he's decided to stand and fight with at least a couple of these tanks. Daddy Cool Jeans going to be pushing on forward, going to be trying to snipe one war factory. Looks like the Tesla coil might be low power, so not really getting in on this fight. And Daddy Cool Jeans, not enough tanks to break down more than just a couple of buildings. May have to suffer and just go for a couple of tanks instead. I'm guessing that's Dynamics Tank, even though it looks like it's Daddy Cool Jeans or it's just uh, completely frozen there and it's glitched completely. This sneaky expansion yes, over sir. here completely unobserved by our Cyan Allies player. Dynamic getting away with a hidden base in the top right-hand corner and getting some serious value from it, even dropping a war factory so he can start producing over there if he should so choose to switch his production to that side of the island. No more naval units for Dynamic, and he's also not selling off that naval yard, which is kind of curious. A lot of medium tanks here for our Cyan Allied player. Probably too many medium tanks for Dynamic's forces. Dynamic moved out but he is not fully powered up. He's doing a good job of spending his cash, and it looks like he's going to be losing a couple of those tanks there. They get caught by the forces of Daddy Cool Jeans, and... All right, the tanks are rushing in. The first heavy tank has been revealed, and now Daddy Cool Jeans knows what is coming his way. Dynamic is going to go for the harvesters. He's not going for any buildings or the MCV or anything. He's going to try and dive on the harvesters. Now he's going to bypass the harvesters and swing around, maybe go for the advanced power plant or something. No, he's going for nothing. Maybe he just wants vision to see the rest of the base. I'm not exactly sure. Floating 2,500 credits, our Cyan allies is uh, not, not uh, spending all of his cash right away. Going to start losing refineries, so I guess he won't have any income, and then he'll be able to spend his cash couple of heavy tanks going down to the medium tanks of Daddy Cool Jeans and Dynamic calls off the attack, comes back through the middle of the map and circles back around to the north side. Daddy Cool Jeans is now a little bit upset about all of these attacks coming from the north and he's instead going to look to go and summon all of his forces up there, leaving himself reasonably exposed. Again, a small tank force could potentially jump in here and uh, kill some of those power plants. One Harvester will end up going down very nicely there. Our Cyan Allied player is uh, just going to be at a disadvantage if he's not able to claim some of this ore outside of his immediate area of influence. Dynamic has done a good job of sending himself up around the map to be able to get ore from multiple patches and to harvest ore from all over the place and not just the area of immediate influence. Heavy tanks and riflemen. That is the law of the land for Dynamic. 
More advanced power plants, more Tesla coils. A couple of media tanks trying to step out, but they're going to get caught by these heavy tanks. Dynamic might be trying to just draw our Cyan allies into a fight near the Tesla coil, so he gets that defender's advantage as well. But our Cyan ally is not going to be moving out. I love this little tank push on the left side. He's going to try and spearhead an attack over here and see if he can catch Dynamic unawares. Dynamic going to be pushing into the middle of the map, going for that harvester. Meanwhile, Daddy Cool Jean's going to try and bypass him. No, he's going to flank around, circling in to surround Dynamic. But will it actually work or will he find himself surrounded as the reinforcements come in for Dynamic? The tanks are good on the side of our Cyan allies, but heavy tanks are better. And it looks like Dynamics got the numbers advantage now, and the slow bleed out has begun. But on the left side of the map, the Tesla coils are doing what they can, but it's just too many tanks. Can the medium tank reinforcements finally do something about it? And right now he's realizing just how many MCVs there are, and this target switching is not doing our Cyan allies player any help. Very unfortunate attack there. He uh, he almost broke down the refinery, then he stopped. Almost broke down the conyard, then he stopped. Almost broke down the the repair pad, and then he stopped. So everything just not quite going the way Daddy Cool Jeans wanted. All right, there we go. More and more harvesters getting cleaned up. Dynamic still has a good number of harvesters, but they have to drive so far to get any ore that uh, he's going to have a hard time keeping them running. One more refinery might be going down, but it's going to cost desperately so many of the few remaining tanks that our Cyan allies has. Bye-bye. He's going to try and retreat with some of his tanks. Does he actually have his own repair pad? The answer is no. He has a decent amount of defensive turrets, but... Uh, these turrets are probably not going to stand up against the sheer numbers that Dynamic has. Heavy tanks beginning to push in. Daddy Cool Jeans doesn't have the numbers to stop the attack this time. Dynamic going for some of the buildings. Going to be losing a couple of tanks to the meager forces. The meager forces of uh, Daddy Cool Jeans. And Dynamic turns around for some reason. Decides not to press any further. He wants to be extra cautious. Killing off some of the infrastructure, some of the infrastructure, the refinery, and some of those defensive turrets, but uh, not really. I mean, he could have pressed further. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. I get not wanting to overstep or overcommit, but like he's got pretty decent vision of the of the base of Daddy Cool Jeans, and dynamic is just not pressing in. Another MCV moving out. This one will get caught, but MCVs have a surprising amount of health when they are all packed up and driving around, so it's not that big of a deal for Dynamic to take a little bit of damage on his Conyard. V2's putting some good punch on these tanks. I guess if the medium tanks ever start shooting the V2s, they might actually be able to kill one of them, but uh, our Cyan allies player is uh, not quite there yet. This is such an un uncharacteristic game for Dynamic that I'm curious if maybe I really have missed something in the development of the meta. Another MCV, he's just going to base push him. These might be friends who are just kind of screwing around with this game. Like, maybe Dynamic is coaching this Cyan Allies player or something, and that's why this game is going this way. And I guess, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is what's going to happen. So you have to manually attack the turrets, it seems like, or you have to manually tell the turrets to attack something like a Tesla coil. They won't auto-attack an aggressive structure like that. And yeah, so he's just going to Tesla coil push this guy, which is not something you see very often. I mean, we've seen it in... I don't know if it happens in Red Alert 2, but we've seen it in Red Alert 3, but we're seeing it here now in Red Alert 1. I've never seen something turn into a base push. It's always just been tanks, 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 tanks. 
Engineers going down and the slow push of Tesla coils. The last refinery as he kills it, kills the harvester as well for good measure. And again, Dynamic could just come in here with uh, with pure tank and crush this, but he's deciding not to. Rifleman trying to jump on that Tesla coil, but it's not going to work. The backup Tesla coil and the Rifleman are enough to push back the Cyan Allies player. And that will do it. There's the fire sale. The last couple of structures going down. It looks like the defensive turret does indeed count. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't check. I think they're... I don't think they're on kill every unit. They they might be. Oh, my. This was actually played with aftermath units as well. I know some people were uh, wanting to not play with aftermath units. And I don't think we actually saw any aftermath units, but that will do it for this game. Uh, definitely a strange one, but a little bit of a change of pace from what we've seen in some of the other RA Red Alert, original Red Alert remastered game. So it wasn't pure light tank, heavy tank, medium tank spam for three minutes and then one player just dies. So that was not a great game, but it was a kind of interesting game. And I'm not actually sure that that was the real dynamic. And we'll just say those are two ellipses players. Anyways, that will do it for this game, for this video. I think this is probably a rainy day video. So if you see it, that's actually raining where I'm recording right now, but it's maybe raining where you are as well. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe not. This was kind of a weird one. Thank you for watching. Anyways, this is Cyber signing out. Okay, I feel like I'm losing my mind, but I just, I have to look at more of these games and every one of them makes me more confused than the last. Welcome to Keep Off the Grass or something. I think this is dynamic down here. It is. He's playing Soviets, and I think this is a Soviet player up here in the yellow. Their name is Abe Grown. I don't know. I casted two games with dynamic, and they were not like games that I had typically seen or played in Remastered. And then there was this game, and it's like, these games just keep getting, just, I don't even know what's going on. So Abe Grown opens a uh, power plant barracks, gets himself, like, a bunch of riflemen, but then he adds on a bunch of grenadiers, which isn't crazy. I mean, it's a little unusual to get five grenadiers, but, you know, whatever. And then gets his refinery, he spent a decent amount of cash, his refinery is maybe a little late, but not a huge, huge deal. Dynamic goes double barracks, one north, one south. Base crawls down with the silo, and then starts base creeping north. Okay, not the craziest thing. I mean, it's a close map. And then four riflemen on the right side, barracks in the north. Abe Grown realizes, sends all of his riflemen in to attack. And of course, Dynamic just starts producing riflemen, repairs the barracks, and then drops a flame turret down right next to the barracks and cleans up all of Abe Grown's riflemen. Takes a little bit of damage over here. Dynamic, no war factory, just one refinery, one harvester, and a second flame turret up on the high ground. He is now flame harassing the refinery of Abe Grown. Abe Grown drops his own turret, and Dynamic drops another barrack, starts producing riflemen literally in this guy's base. And second refinery, nowhere to be seen. So goodbye refinery. Abe Grown still has three grand left, you know, so he's doing okay in terms of he has money, but um, yep. First heavy tank is out. Second flame turret is out for Abe Grown. Not pulling his reinforcements over from over there. And I mean, this seems like a do or die kind of a situation. So you might want as many infantry and reinforcements as you can possibly get. Grenadier from the low ground actually tagging this barracks pretty nicely. But there's the sell off and the target down of the MCV. So Abe Grown, what you see is what you get. He's got a couple of harvesters, maybe he could go for crushes with them, and barracks goes down. And war factory goes down. I don't what happened in Red Alert? What even happened? This is not what games used to look like. I mean, base crawling to your opponent, but then flame turret rushing them? 
I just, I don't know. Like, I've seen games play out on this map before, and they went nothing like this. I love this from Dynamic. No War Factory. One Refinery. That's what he's going off of here. And then it's just all infantry. So I don't know what's going on in the world of Red Alert. Apparently, it's just nuts. But uh, I just, I have to keep watching these replays because I don't understand them and I don't know what's going on. Thank you all very much for watching. I don't know what's happening.